it's a beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning that the Lord has given to us. It's the 12th month of the year, December. I don't know whether you thought you would you'd ever reach this far because 2020 has been uh, that year when uh, you cannot be able to really tell how things will be. But here, is, here it is. God has taken care of us. God has led us. Uh, God has been on our side. And uh, you know what? Christmas is coming and it doesn't matter how things are. We are going to celebrate uh, the birth uh, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But before we do anything, talk about Christmas. But you know it's December. I need to talk about Christmas anyway. But before we do that, I'd like to invite all of us to be part of the service today at ICC Mombasa. And uh, we are glad that you're watching. You're part of this service. Uh, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube or you're watching this on Raya TV or iccmombasa.online. It doesn't matter. We welcome every one of you. It's going to be a great service. We'll begin with worship, just spending time in the presence of the Lord, lifting up our voices to Him in worship and song. And then after that, we will have a ministration time when uh, one of the staff, uh, one of our pastors here at ICC Mombasa, will come and just be able to pray and uh, minister to each one of you. And uh, I invite you to participate uh, in every bit of the service so far, you know, in worshiping the Lord and uh, during ministry time go ahead and just point your heart out to the Lord and he will hear you even as uh, one of our pastors here at ICC prays with us and then after that we'll have a declaration time just bringing uh, a, you know a song of declaration to the Lord and then uh, we'll have announcements uh, offering and the ministry of the Word of God be uh, you know right here participate engage go ahead right now and call all your friends Text them, tell them, hey, service is beginning and you need to be part of this. Uh, you know, if you're on Facebook, go ahead, invite your friends. If you're on Raya TV, send a text and tell people, hey, uh, you need to watch this together with me. And uh, my name is uh, Edward Monene and I'm the senior pastor at International Christian Center Mombasa. And I'd like to say officially, you're welcome. You're part of this church. Let's have a great service together. Having said that, I'd like to pray and then we will begin our service. Our Heavenly Father, it's our... A, a, a beautiful day that you have given to us. The opportunity, Lord, to come before you with worship, with song, with our prayers. And even, Lord, as you share your word, I pray today you minister to us powerfully. Lord Almighty, it doesn't matter where people are watching this from, I pray, God, would you minister to them? Would you speak to them? Would you stir their hearts? And would you lead them into a deeper relationship with yourself? Lord, we ask of you to meet us at the point of our needs and to satisfy us with every good thing. Give us a great day today. May you help us, Lord, to just have a lovely time in your presence. And we trust you that, God, you will show up and show up your glory in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Let's join together with the team as they lead us in music.
indeed we will trust in the name of the Lord we have safety in the name of the Lord we have healing salvation in the name of the Lord the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and they are safe and we trust in that name because the word of God tells us trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and so we trust in the name of the Lord. Father, we trust you. We depend on you. We pray that, Lord, your name is what we will run to, that you will hide us in your name, that we will find refuge in your name, that we will find safety in your name, because your word is true, Lord, and that which your word says, uh, that is what happens. And so today, Lord, we thank you for the safety and the refuge that we find and we experience in your name. We love you, Lord. We bless you. We honor you and we glorify you, Lord. For your name is great. And at the mention of your name, Lord Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord for the glory of God the Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Child of God, uh, I just want us to to look and to focus on just one scripture that I'm going to read uh, in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20 uh, during the reign of King Jehoshaphat in Judah. Uh, three nations, the Moabites, Ammonites, uh, were ambushing. They had planned to attack this nation of Judah. And Jehoshaphat was afraid. He was worried. Uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 3, it says that Jehoshaphat was worried. He was afraid. Uh, it says, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all the land. Why was he afraid? It's because he was helpless. Uh, he was afraid because uh, he was under attack by all these nations that were powerful and stronger than, than his nation or his army. Uh, but there's one thing that Jehoshaphat did. He ran, he set himself to seek the Lord. And he prayed and he called on the name of the Lord. Uh, and he reminded the Lord of the mighty works and the mighty deeds that he did uh, to, to his ancestors. Uh, and reminding the Lord that you are the God of Abraham. You are the God of our ancestors, uh, of, of uh, Israel, the God of Jacob. And you are our God. And there's nothing that can withstand the power that is in your hand. And he prayed and he set himself to seek him. And I just want us to read, uh, to point ourselves to verse number 12. The Bible says uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 12, it says, O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us 
nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. He was helpless, and he expressed himself before God in that same way. He did not hide himself. He did not uh, miss any words, but he came truthfully before God. And maybe you are there. You are faced with a situation, maybe as a nation, uh, or situation and circumstances uh, that are facing you, that are causing you to be helpless. Uh, you do not know how to contend or how to deal with this problem. You do not know how to deal with this situation. You do not have the solutions. You do not have the strength. You do not have the resources. Today I want to encourage you, my brother and my sister. Come to the Lord as you are, just like Jehoshaphat did. Uh, he went to the Lord. Uh, you bring all your fears to him. And the Bible says, Jehoshaphat prayed. Uh, and called on the name of the Lord, and he prayed, and he said, Lord, we have no power against this multitude that is coming against us, and also, we do not know what to do. That means he had no solutions, but our eyes, our focus is on you. And so today, I want to transfer, or rather to direct your focus unto the Lord, that you bring your situation. You bring that difficult circumstance, that helplessness, bring it unto the Lord. Cause your focus be unto him. Lift up your eyes and look upon him. Our eyes and our gaze should be upon the Lord in situations that are too difficult, in circumstances that we cannot, uh, we do not have solutions, and areas where we are not able. Today, my brother and my sisters, we minister to each other. I just want you to raise your hand uh, to God in heaven and just call on his name as I pray and believe together with you. Whatever it is, let us focus on the Lord God Almighty because the Bible says that God will intervene. The battle belongs to God. And that is how he intervened uh, to Jehoshaphat. Uh, the Bible says uh, that God appeared, that God spoke, and he said this you do not have to be afraid anymore. This battle belongs to me. And Jehoshaphat obtained a great victory. And God's word is true. God's word is alive. God's word is perfect. And if we focus our gaze and look upon him and call on his name, then the Lord will intervene. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. This moment, we want to lift ourselves and lift our eyes on you, O oh my Father, because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the God Almighty, the one who did wonders, uh, the one who still performed, performs wonders, O oh Lord. You are the miraculous God. There is nothing that can withstand your power. And therefore, Lord, even at this moment, I lift up my brother and my sister in the situations that they are in. I lift up our nation. I lift up every circumstance, oh my Father, that is too difficult, that is impossible, that, is, uh, that has brought in confusion, that has brought in fear, that has brought in uh, bewilderment, and there is no way of solving it, oh my Father. Today we focus our eyes on you, oh my Father, for we have heard of your fame, and we have heard of the things that you have done, oh my Master. And we ask you that today, oh my Father, you will intervene in those circumstances, oh Lord, the challenges, the battles that they are facing. I pray that you will speak your word, that you will intervene, oh my father, that you will step in into this situation, oh my father, and cause those uh, battles, oh my father, to become your battles. For your word indeed has promised us, and it is said, oh my father, that the battle belongs to you. And so today I declare and decree that this battle that your people are facing, it belongs to you. And so we thank you and we bless you for the victory that your people are going to receive. And Lord, you're procuring for them. This is for the glory and honor of your holy and perfect name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen and amen. Ah, child of God, it is done. And I believe that God has heard and is intervening in that situation. Therefore, rise up. Uh, with joy, and let us together, join together with the music team in making this declaration unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As you do so, believe that it has been done. Amen. God bless you.
joined together with the team in declaring indeed the name of the Lord uh, is higher than all other names. The name of the Lord has power. The name of the Lord uh, is majestic. And there's so much more that I can say about the name of Jesus. And here's what I'd like to do. Just call on that name over your life, over your situations, your circumstances, your situations. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe. And they are safe. And so Jesus, show up in the lives of these men and women. I pray that they will hide in you. They will run to you. They will be safe in you. And you will minister to them richly by your Holy Spirit. And so whether you're facing an illness, a situation of whatever kind, a financial issue, whatever it might be, I call on the name of Jesus. May his power be released upon you. May his grace be upon you. May you experience a healing that comes from him. May you be lifted up by the Lord because his name is what we are calling upon. Jesus is at work in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
uh, let me just say, uh, you know, I, I'd like to invite us to join together with us here at ICC for a time of worship uh, today at 4 p.m today at 4 p.m. And so I invite you, uh, you know, Kenyan time, 4 p.m., uh, to be part of that. Let's worship together. Let's exalt the name of the Lord. Let's call on the name of Jesus and his power, his grace, his glory, and his majesty will be released over your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Having said all that, I'd like to invite us to go ahead and uh, join together and give uh, today. And uh, let me just say, uh, worship has not come to an end yet because we believe that uh, giving is part of worship here at ICC Mombasa. Uh, because God blesses us, God gives us resources that uh, we in turn come back with and begin to exalt God, begin to honor God, begin to worship Him uh, with our resources. We give of our tithes, of our offerings, of our fast fruits. We give because we honor the name of the Lord. We come back to Him in worship. We come back to Him to glorify Him and exalt Him. And so I invite you to go ahead and do that. Let's give to the Lord. And as you do so, may the Lord bless you richly. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May God give you his grace and peace. May the Lord lift you up. Because he gave a sure promise uh, that uh, indeed he will lift us up when the enemy comes in like a flood, that he will raise a standard. And I pray that God will raise a standard for you and take care of you in every way. May his presence and peace be upon you. May you be favored of the Lord. I bless you as you give. May you experience the goodness and the power of God over every area of your life. Having prayed, uh, here is uh, Alice just going to lead us uh, and just share with us how uh, we are going to give. And as you do so, may the Lord bless you just like we have prayed. Enjoy uh, your giving time. Do it with a smile. Do it generously. Do it to honor and glorify God. I invite you to do that. Amen. We would like to invite you and give you the opportunity to worship the Lord with your giving. All of the details on how you can give are on your screen right now. There are several ways in which you can give here at ICC Mombasa. If you are giving through M-Pesa, our pay bill number is 488508. I will repeat that, 488508. For account, you write offering or tithe or special offering or whatever it is that you are giving towards. You can also give through our equity bank till and the till number is 488508. If you would like to give through PayPal, Sendwave, Wildremit, Simba, or any other app that you can use, the details are also on your screen right now. Our bank account number is 100,092.33, and our account is domiciled at NCBA Bank. Our SWIFT code is on your screen, and our PayPal email address is info at iccmombasa.org info at iccmombasa.org thank you so much for your giving to the work of the lord god bless you every first sunday of the month we have our two our non-stop worship service, which we call Emmanuel. This happens from 4 to 6 p.m. Let's come together and lift up the name of Jesus. Our declaration of our city and our nation is, Jesus is Lord. Do not miss out. International Christian Center Mombasa would like to invite you to our prayer service which happens every Tuesday evening from 6 to 7.30 p.m. We believe in prayer. In fact, the prayer service is our most important service here at ICC. You can join us on Facebook, YouTube and iccmsa.online.church. God bless you. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Join us every Friday evening from 8 to 9 p.m. for conversations on parenting, where we have real live conversations 
upon real life issues that parents face as they try and raise godly children in these perilous times. Are you part of a caring community? If not, you can be part of one today. Here at ICC, we believe in growing small so that we can grow big. A caring community is simply a small group of believers who live in the same neighborhood, who do what the Bible says the believers did in Acts 2.42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Join us C2 today. Be blessed. I'd like to uh, welcome you back uh, to, you know, after listening to the announcements and giving, I'd like to welcome you back so that we can share the word of God. And uh, would you go ahead and just take a moment right now. Uh, let's pray together. Let's ask the Lord to bless our time together in the word and to speak to us very, very clearly. My Father and my God, I pray with my brothers and sisters from all over that are watching and following this uh, service it's my prayer that you would speak to us by your word. I pray that, Lord, you give me eloquence, you give me guidance and direction by your spirit to bring forth and to speak and share with your people that which you desire. My God, I pray, Lord, use me as a vessel in your hands to accomplish your purposes today. In Jesus' name we pray. And every one of us said, Amen. Amen. And let me just uh, quickly off the uh, blocks, as they say, uh, go ahead and just tell you or, or share with you that uh, this is a sermon that is not necessarily uh, part of the sermon series that ended at the end of November, but neither is it part of uh, what we are sharing about in December, but it's a sermon to sort of just tie the two together. And so I'm going back to some things that we shared last week, uh, looking at the life of a man by the name of Joshua, and uh, I'll just tie some things, wrap this up, and uh, just bring a word, a word of encouragement, a word of hope, and a word of inspiration to us and I believe uh, that uh, the Lord will speak to us uh, very powerfully today and so if you have your Bibles I, I would ask you to go ahead and get them ready if you have your pens and notebook uh, let's go ahead and get ready to share in the Word of God I am saying to us today that for us to be used of God in extraordinary ways then we've got to be ready to do extraordinary things for us to be used of God to do extraordinary uh, exploits extraordinary things then we need to choose not to do or to settle for the ordinary things that everyone else around us is doing or living by but begin to do and to pursue the extraordinary things that uh, you know will help us live the kind of life that God wants us to live I'll explain myself in just a moment. But the thing is, the thing is, for the last several months in the nation of Kenya, and I believe that this is the same right across, um, you know, the continent of Africa, the continent of North America and South America, in Europe, in Asia, and uh, the islands of the sea and Australia, you know, there's been a pandemic that, that has been ravaging the world. And because of that, our lifestyles have changed. Many of us have, uh, you know, sort of uh, just desired and longed for when things will go back to normal. In fact, when it was announced by Pfizer, one of the, uh, you know, drug manufacturing companies in the world that uh, they have been able to formulate a, a vaccine, you know, people celebrated because, you know, and, and I remember hearing this newscaster in one of the international media houses saying, now our lives can go back to normal. Now our lives can go back to normal. Because you see, the thing is, we, we love just being ordinary. We love just having an ordinary life, being able to do what everyone else is doing, what our fathers did, what our mothers did, what our cousins did, what our people before them did, and, and, and even what our generation is doing. That, that's what we love. You know? And any time 
uh, whether it be because of a pandemic like what we're facing or uh, maybe because situations change, your company has laid you off or anything like that, the moment things do not go the way we thought, when life stops being normal, what we tend to do is complain. What we tend to do is... Uh, you know, begin to look and uh, we, we don't like what is going on. And, uh, and that happened with the children of Israel. When they got into the promised land and they began to capture the lands that, that really were located to them and they were given their promised lands, you know, they were comfortable. They wanted the ordinary life that they had come to experience being together. You know, no one wanted to be scattered. No one wanted to go out there and begin to conquer the territories that they had been given. Apart from Caleb, who comes to Joshua uh, together with the uh, men of, uh, and women of Judah and saying, hey, you, you need to give us our allotment. Apart from that, most of the people were comfortable. They were comfortable just going on with life, the life that they were used to. Because that's what we tend to do. We, we don't want to go out there. We don't want to pursue anything that we are supposed to be pursuing. We, we don't want to go beyond the borders, so to say, of, of our confines and of our security. And so we find security in the ordinariness, if I would make up that word, of life. And, and that's one of the things that really has been the biggest problem on planet Earth. I can tell you this. The biggest problem has not been the, the COVID-19 pandemic. But the biggest problem has been a lot of people just not wanting anything new, but wanting to just stay at the place called normal or ordinary. Many of us don't want to go out there. And so when you're told to wear a mask, something that you've never done, maybe uh, from the time that you were born and you grew up, you know, you've seen people wearing masks, doctors and such, you've never worn one. The, the fact that you're required to wear a mask becomes an issue and you're looking for every... I, I, I keep on, you know, finding myself amused any time uh, that, that I see. Let me demonstrate here. Any time that I see people uh, wearing their masks this way, just bear with me. I hope you can hear me. And so uh, that's how you're supposed to wear a mask, uh, you know, properly covered and all. But, but then I find people uh, beginning to do that. You know, they, they, they want to expose their nose. They want to expose their nose. Others uh, believe that they are still wearing a mask. Uh, I'd like to ask you, am I wearing a mask? Really? No. <laughs> no. But we love it. And we assume that because you've done that, you have a mask on. No, you don't have a mask on. But, but here's the thing. It's because you want to turn towards the ordinary. You want to turn towards the normal. You want to turn towards what you're used to. And, and this is just a small illustration. My way of saying, wear that mask, wear it properly. Wear the mask, wear it properly. But here's the thing. Let's move away from COVID-19 and, and the pandemic and everything. Uh, allow me to say this. Allow me to say this, you know, we, we settle with, with the same clique of friends. We settle in the same places. We, we, we go about the mundane. We, we become average. We settle in with everyone else. Even though God has gifted us, given us talent and equipped us with so much, we never see it and we never exercise it or utilize it because we have settled for things that we should never settle for. You might be looking at me and wondering, Pastor, where are you going with this? You know, where are you going with this? What is it that you're going to share with us? What is it that you want to uh, bring up to us? Joshua chapter 18. The Bible says, beginning from verse number 1, The whole assembly of the Israelites gathered at Shiloh and set up the tent of meeting there. The country was brought under their control. But there were still seven Israelite tribes who had not yet received their inheritance. They had not yet received their inheritance. Now, uh, b before I say anything else, these seven tribes, out of, out of 12 tribes, and one tribe had no allotment because their allotment was the Lord, you know, the Levites. And so you, you have 11 tribes and seven have not yet taken their possession. Why? Why? They had the inheritance. It had been given to them. But they had not yet taken possession of it. They have not received it. Verse number 3, the Bible says, So Joshua said to the Israelites, How long will, we, will you wait before you begin to take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has given you? Appoint three men from each tribe, 
and I will send them out to make a survey of the land, to write a description of it according to the inheritance of each. Then they will return to me. You are to divide the land into seven parts. Judah is to remain in its territory on the south and the tribes of Joseph in their territory on the north. After you have written descriptions of the seven parts of the land, bring them here to me and I will cast lots for you in the presence of the Lord our God. The Levites, however, do not get a portion among you because the priestly service of the Lord is their inheritance. And God, Reuben, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have already received their inheritance on the east side of the Jordan. Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave it to them. Now, allow me to post there because I'm preaching from there today and I believe that God will just stir your heart and quicken you. I told you, today I came to encourage you, I came to inspire you, I came to light a fire and I pray that it shall burn for the glory and the praise of the living God. And so here we are, here we are, God has given the, the children of Israel the land, the, the promised land. It's theirs. They have entered in. They have begun to see the victory of the Lord. But yet there were seven tribes that had not yet taken possession of what was theirs, even though God had given it. Uh, allow me to say this. God giving you a promise God speaking to you, God, God, God gifting you and giving you the grace and the favor and the anointing to do something does not materialize into you walking in that very thing that God has given you or gifted you or anointed you for until the day you decide, I am going to take possession of what is mine in the Lord. Because the children of Israel, according to heaven, he, God's will had been done. God had given them the land. But the people needed to rise up and do something about it. They needed to rise up and do something about it. But here is the thing. The reason why they had not done it. At some point they became comfortable. At some point they settled. At some point they arrived at a place called ordinary or normal. And they built their tents there. And they settled there. And they did not go after what God wanted them to go after. Until Joshua shows up. And he tells them. How long? That's a good question. How long will you wait before you take possession of what is rightfully yours? And, and I'd like to just pause here and, and say I love this man. I love Joshua. Because you see, if Joshua did not push the people, if Joshua did not call them out, if Joshua did not encourage them, these people will never have taken possession of what was theirs. They will never have taken possession. And last week we began to talk about Joshua. And I'd like to just say this. Every one of us needs to have the Joshua spirit. That, that, that spirit that refuses to settle. That refuses to accept the status quo. That refuses to say, hey, this is a nice place. Let's stay here. That, that spirit that says, no, there, there is more land. There is a place you are supposed to go. There is land we are supposed to take over. And so we need to go after it. And so throughout this year, many of us have settled for things that are way below what God desired of us. Many of us have settled in places that we should not have settled. And we have the excuses for it. You know, we, it's COVID-19. It's COVID-19. I was talking with a pastor friend of mine, and, and uh, as we were having the discussion, you know, he tells me, yeah, you see, uh, things have been difficult, and, and I've not been able to just stream services and do all that has been my, in my heart to do. And, and I stopped him midway, and I said, no, 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 you cannot blame COVID-19 for things that you did not do. You cannot, you cannot pause and, and begin to say that I did not pursue what God called me for. I cannot do the things that God called me to do. I cannot go after the things that God called me to go after simply because there was a pandemic. If it's preaching, there are many ways that you'd, you'd have been able to preach. If, if it's uh, reaching out to people, there are so many ways to reach out to people. And especially in this day and age, it's called the information age. There is so much that we can do that will touch and inspire and change and impact people for God's glory. But you see, we, we love settling. We, we love just saying what everyone else is saying. Oh, it's been a difficult year. But pause and ask yourself, has it been a difficult year? Because I, I had somebody, 
a business person say it's been a difficult year and and then i challenged him and i said hey wait but but uh, I, I thought several weeks ago uh, you, you know you, you you told me that there was a contract a deal that had come your way that that, that was nothing compared with what you've experienced all your years and he said oh yeah uh, th that was a big one and i posted and i said so how has it been a difficult year when it's that year when god has lifted you from that place where you are and brought you to a new level opened doors for you and allowed you to do business in a scale that you have not done before you see it's so easy to speak like everyone else it's so easy to think like everyone else oh yeah it's so easy to copy what everyone else is doing back to the mask issue somebody was sharing with me and his, they said how they arrived in in uh, in, in one of the towns in Kenya and they realized they were the only ones who were wearing a mask and uh, and because everyone else didn't have a mask and people are looking at him funnily you know he removed his mask and put it away now the question is the question is do you wear a mask because it looks good on you or do you wear a mask because you're protecting yourself and protecting the other people because you never know you might be the one who who uh, you know they don't have masks because they, they are okay there is no infection among them and you're the one with the infection uh, allow me uh, you know to just say no friends we, we need to stop copying what everyone else is doing have you ever seen the video on uh, on youtube it's it's one of the popular videos out there of uh, this guy who enters the lift with a friend of his and uh, you know they, they, they press the buttons a little bit and then they step out quickly you know as though there's a problem with the lift and they're like oh my goodness oh my goodness this this thing is about to and and they run out and every time they do that everyone else in the lift walks out and they leave the lift empty simply because of the actions of two people and, and they and this video was recorded they, they were doing this with full lifts and people would walk out you don't know you have no idea why they are walking out you are not even asking questions you just step out quickly because you see in lifts rarely do people talk to one another now that, that that's interesting and, and i know that's not the only video that has been done to illustrate that you know, we, we tend to follow what everyone else is doing. We tend to do what everyone else is doing. And so the children of Israel, these seven tribes, they settled around the same area. They built their tents there and they were happy to be gathered there even though their land was still not conquered. The enemy was still prowling in their, la in their lands. You know, the, the people that were supposed to you know, conquer were still occupying what belonged to them. But it took Joshua. It took Joshua, a man that refused the status quo, a man that refused to accept that, that uh, you know, the children of Israel will just continue to, to dwell and live in the same place and that's it. He, he challenged them, he pushed them uh, to go a little further. And, and I'd like to just say to us today, because I already said it, that, that we need to have the, the Joshua spirit, that we need to do these three things. Let me give them to you uh, very quickly. Let me give them to you quick, uh, very quickly. What, what I see in Joshua was a man that always kept his eyes on the promise. He was a man. That's my number one. He was a man that always kept his eyes on the promise. What was the promise? What God had spoken. What God had said. What God had promised. And, and I call us today to be that kind of a person. To live your life. Whether it be in your spiritual life. In your finances. In your business. Just going through life. You need to live with your eyes on the fullness of God's calling. Not, not, not uh, on the temporariness of the things around you. Don't settle for what is going on. Keep your eyes on what God has for you. Is it your prayer life is there somewhere that you need to go with god is it your reading of the bible is it you know you, you need to memorize and read a little bit more and dig a little bit deeper he listened to me we need to push ourselves you know and keep seeing what it is that god wants us to see because if you settle for what everyone else has settled for you will never arrive where god desires for you to arrive paul writes to timothy and he says 
to him that I fought the good fight. I have run the race. And now what is remaining is that crown that Jesus has for me. I'm paraphrasing here. Because what I want to bring out is Paul was simply saying, I've kept my eyes on the Lord. I've kept my eyes on that which God called me for. I've kept my eyes going after that which God desired of me. I never settled for what was going on around me. My, my friends, do you have your eyes on the crown? What is it that God desires of you? You need to go after it. You need to go after it. Don't settle. In fact, some of us don't, don't necessarily settle for what other people have settled for. But we settle for our own routine. You come to a place where you build your camp and you settle there and you decide I have a good prayer life. I have a good understanding of the Bible and, and my business is doing okay and everyone else. No. No, no, no. Listen to me. Keep your eyes on what Jesus has for you. Go after it. Go after it. Is it your relationship with God? Is it your friendships? Is it your finances? Don't settle for anything less than God's best for your life. Don't do it. And so Joshua tells the people, we cannot settle. We, we, for, until when shall we continue to settle for what uh, we, we have ended up settling for? How long will you wait before you begin to take possession. How long will we wait? And so keep your eyes. Did you hear that? You've got to keep your eyes on what God has for you. On what God has called you for. On what God has promised you. What is the vision for your business? Because you see, for you to not settle, you need a very clear vision. You need a very clear vision. Because sometimes that's where the problem comes in. Now listen to this. Joshua tells the people, appoint three men from each tribe. And then I will send them out and they will go and scout the land. In other words, they will map it out. Another way of saying it, they will have a clear vision of their lands. And because they will have a clear vision, everyone else will be able to follow them. You see, Joshua realized that these people, their problem was they had never visualized their inheritance. They had never visualized the promise of God. They had never visualized what it is that God had in store for them. Remember God telling Abraham, walk through the land. As far as you can see and as far as you go, I will give the land to you. Why? Because it's important for us to be able to visualize. When your dream is so small, when, you, when your vision is so small that, that, that uh, you, you cannot see what God has for you, it becomes impossible for you to go after it. Because you can never go after what you have never seen. You can never go after what you have never seen. You need to see it. And you need to see it with your, vis with your spiritual eyes. You need to see it with your dream. You need to see it you know, with your vision. You need to see it. And so I pray today that God will begin to give each one of you a vision. A vision of the life that he has for you. A vision of the kind of life that he wants you to live. A vision of the impact and the difference that you can be able to make. Because my friends, I already told you, you, you need to uh, go after. You need to keep your eyes focused on what God has for, has for you. And you will not be able to keep your eyes focused on it if you have never visualized it, you, you've never seen it. And so I call you today to that place. W would you see it? Would you see God's purpose for your life? Would you see God's dream for your life? Oh, God, God does not dream of you. God does not see you struggling with sin, struggling with addictions, struggling, you know, and falling after the same things over and over again. That's not what God sees for you. And, and so you need to see it and go after it. Paul said, you know, he's waiting for that crown for which Jesus has for him. Would you turn together with me to, to the book of Philippians chapter number three? Let me show you something from the word of God. Philippians chapter 3. This is the Apostle Paul. There is something he says in there that, that is very critical for me to show you. Paul says this in Philippians chapter 3 verse number 12. He writes and says, not that I have already obtained all this or I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. 
brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken a hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, I strain towards what is ahead. And so I'm able, I'm able to do like Joshua. I'm able to have the Joshua spirit. I'm able to keep my eyes on that inheritance, that promised land. And so I don't settle for anything. But here is the thing, verse number 14. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. He repeats something twice. He says, Christ has taken hold of it and, and, and that place that I'm going, that which I'm pursuing is in Christ Jesus and so he had a clear vision he is not shadow boxing, he's not beating around the bush, he knows what it is that he's going after, do you know what it is that you're supposed to go after Oh, many of us don't. Even when it comes to our own Christian life, we don't know what it is that God has for us. So many of us in the body of Christ have settled for the fact that we are saved from sin. But I came to discover that the reason why a lot of us struggle with sin is because we have no clear vision of where we are supposed to be going. I once preached to someone and I said, because of that which I know that God has called me towards, every time temptation or a situation comes, I always wait on the, on the basis of what it is that I know that God has called me for. And so I will ask myself, is this worth losing that for? Yeah, I have a clear, I have a clear picture of what it is that God has for me. What God has called me for. And because of that, I cannot afford to let anything steal that. No. No, no, I'm not settling. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm not giving in to sin or pleasures or, or situations here. I, there is somewhere I am going. And that place, my friend, is not comparable to anything else. My vision is clear. I know what it is that my God has called me for. And I invite you to that place. See it. See it. See your victory in Christ. See the grace that God has for you. See where your business is supposed to go. You see, when you have a clear vision of where your business is supposed to go and what you're supposed to do and accomplish, when you're tempted to bribe, you will know this will steal that. This will destroy that. Oh, and you will not give up on it. You will not. But many of us, because we don't have a clear picture of what God has called us to, we end up selling out. And so the children of Israel were refusing to go after their inheritance because they had never seen it. And so Joshua says, I need to solve the problem. I need to help you see. I need to help you understand. I need to, to help you visualize. Because when you visualize, you'll be able to fight for it. You, you'll be able to go after it. You'll be able to go after it. Now something interesting happens. And I'll show it to us in just a moment. Something very interesting Oh, I love just the way the word of God paints the picture. Same chapter that we're looking at, chapter number 18. We begin reading and we read this. Actually, it's chapter number 17, sorry. If you just go back there, there's something that I want to read uh, and I've preached from there before. Verse number 15, the Bible says, Joshua is answering one of the tribes, the sons of Joseph. They come to him and they say that the, the land, the inheritance that they have, they have gotten is not enough for them. Because there are so many of them. Verse number 15, the Bible says, If you are so numerous, Joshua answered, And if the hill country of Ephraim is too small for you, go up into the forest and clear land for yourselves. There in the land of the Perizzites and Rephites. The people of Joseph replied, The hill country is not enough for us. And all the Canaanites who live in the plain have chariots fitted with iron both those in Beth Shan and its settlements and those in the valley of Jezreel. Verse number 17, But Joshua said to the tribes of Joseph and to Ephraim and Manasseh, You are numerous and very powerful. You will have not only one allotment, 
but the forested hill country as well clear it it's your father's limits its father's limits will be yours though the canaanites have chariots fitted with iron and though they are strong you can drive them out and so my, my, my next point and my last point I, i'd like to say to us is we've got to pick ourselves and do something uh, we've got to pick ourselves and do something and, and so you you see it and you stay focused you you clarify your vision and number three you you've got to pick yourself up and do something why am i saying this because you see uh, when Joshua is talking to the rest of the people, he actually note, notes that the sons of Joseph has, have their inheritance. You know, Judah is to remain in its territory. I'm reading verse number five uh, right in the middle there. And the tribes of Joseph in their territory on the north. You know, and, and so he says Judah have their inheritance because Caleb and uh, the people of Judah had come and asked for their inheritance. And, and then the sons of Joseph, you know, uh, Ephraim and Manasseh have their inheritance. And so it's the rest of the people that needed to sort out their inheritance. I, I hope you're following along with me here. Now, here is the thing. Here is the thing. You see uh, that the sons of Joseph, they came and, and they said, hey, we, we have taken possession of our inheritance, but it's too small for us. We need something more. And Joshua said, ha, you have the ability, you have the power, you, God is with you. Go, you will conquer, you will win. And so, uh, you know, it, it wasn't uh, enough for them to just say, we are trusting God. You know, God give us the allotment. They had the allotment, but they needed to do something. They needed to fight for it. And that's what the other tribes had not done. They they are not picked themselves up. They are not picked up their weapons. They are not pick up, uh, picked up their warriors and, and their abilities and talents and put them together and gone out there to fight for their land. And many times this happens with, with us. We, we don't see what we are able to do. We don't see the ability. We don't see the talent. We don't see the gifting. We don't see what is available with us. Many times we cry out, oh God help me. And I think for so long and especially in 2020, many of us have been praying, waiting for God to move in our lives and I believe with everything in me that God has been waiting for you to make a move oh he has he has I believe that heaven has been looking at us and, and all the prayers that we are making and, and God is thinking, you know, when will they make a move? When will they attempt something? When they, will they trust? When will they believe? When will they pray? Oh, somebody step out there and do something. You see, it happened with Jesus on the day that he broke the five loaves and two fish and gave them to the people. I, I, I love, I love uh, just reading the stories, the, the parables of Jesus and the stories and what happened with our Lord and our Savior. And so he tells the people to sit down. He tells the people to sit down, ready to eat a meal. And then he gives thank. Uh, he gives thanks uh, to, to God. Can you believe it? Uh, he lifts up his eyes and he says, God, thank you. Thank you. I praise you for this food. And then he picks two fish and five loaves. At that point, they are not multiplied in any way. But then he begins to break them. Just, just think with me for a moment. Did Jesus break the fish more than 5,000 times or did he just break the fish into enough pieces and put them in the basket and then the miracle happened now when you're still thinking that let me tell you it has no implications in any way because here is my point my point is not about the breaking my point is this my point is this the moment he made a move in breaking the fish and the loaves and putting in the basket is when the miracle of provision happened before that, as he gave thanks to the Father, before that, as he asked the people to be told to sit down, the fish was still two and the bread was still five loaves. And many of us have been looking at the loaves and the fish. And because they are not yet multiplied, we continue to pray. Oh God, I pray that you bless my business. God, I pray that you will move. God, I pray that you will open a door. God, I pray that you will perform a miracle. God, I pray you will do this. God, I pray you will do the other. Oh, God, I pray that you give me my inheritance. God, I pray that you give me the hill country. God, I pray that you will give me the land. And God is waiting for you to make a move. 
to pick yourselves up and say I'm breaking my fish. To pick yourself up and pick your weapons and say I'm going after the Canaanites even though they have chariots of weapons and I don't. I, you just pick yourself because the victory and the miracle is not in when you're praying and waiting on God. The miracle is actually on the other side when you step out to go do what it is that you believe that God has called you for. And so it's time. Prayer is important, yes. Fasting is important, yes. It's important to prepare yourself and everything. But, but the miracle will happen. The miracle will happen when you step out there. When you decide to do something with your life. When you decide to pick up the Bible and begin to read. For those of you who have always struggled with the Bible. And understanding and reading. When you begin to open the pages. That's when revelation will come. When you get on your knees and begin to pray because you've always struggled with prayer. That's when God will give you the grace to pray. When you decide I am going to fast a meal or two or three. That's when the grace will come. You see the waters of the Jordan River never parted until the children of Israel stepped into the waters. The waters of the Red Sea never parted. Until Moses lifted up his rod over the water, right at the edge, looking like a foolish man, facing the sea, and the enemy is right behind you. Let me tell you, it, it looks stupid. You, you should be telling the people how to fight, but you're facing the Red Sea, and you lift up your arms. The miracle happens when you make a move, and you need to make a move. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? You need to make a move because we've been waiting on God to make a move but God is waiting for us to make a move God is waiting for us to make a move don't, don't let this ear end without you making a move don't let the ear coming come without you making a move don't 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 just sit there you you need to rise up and you need to say God I am going after the vision that you've given me I am going after that dream I am going after the things that you've called me for and you make a move and you begin going and as you go may God Go with you. May the miracle be done. May the doors open. May you see the re Red Sea parting. May you see the river Jordan piling up. May you see your enemies defeated. May you see God providing and performing the miracles and making a way and guiding and lifting and blessing. Oh, I pray that the favor of the Lord shall be upon you. Make a move because that will take you where you have never been. And so Joshua refuses to let the people settle. He tells them, keep your eyes focused. You need to clarify the vision and you need to make a move. Pick yourself up and make a move. My friends, we've got to pick ourselves up and make a move. The best way to conclude this sermon is when Jesus looked at the man who had been lying on his mattress. And he had been there for a while. And Jesus told him, pick it up. Just, just pick it up and, and go home. Oh, You'd have expected that Jesus is going to lift him up. And then he'll ask the disciples to roll the, the mattress for him. No, he had to pick himself up and roll his mattress. And what it is that he had always lied on. What it is that had always accepted and held him. What it is that had become his norm. Became the same thing that he rolled up. And said you're not holding me anymore. Is there something you need to roll up? Is there something you need to walk away from? Is there something you need to pick up and say. You shall not hold me in captivity anymore. You shall not limit me. I am going to be all that God desires. Listen to me. All the grace. All the power. All the gifting. Everything that God. God has for you he has already released to you but when shall you take possession of it you've got to make a move and not tomorrow you're going to make the move today Oh, you need to make the move today let me pray for you let me let, let me just ask the Lord to help you do this if you're watching and listening and you're part of this uh, service and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, this is where it begins. You need to make a move. You need to say from today, I am going to live for God. I'm going to honor God. I'm going to serve God's purposes. I'm going to glorify God for the rest of my life. You need to make a move. If you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, would you go ahead and pray for yourself and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Wash me with your blood and make me your child. Make that prayer right now. And, and once you make that prayer, send your name to the name.
number on your screen and somebody is going to pray with you somebody is going to call you somebody is going to send you material that uh, you can begin to study and go through and uh, we'll give you a bible we'll send you a bible so that you can begin to uh, just walk in the things of god the rest of us the rest of us allow me to pray for you even as you pray for yourself would you go ahead and say god help me to make a move help me to clarify my vision help me to be able lord almighty to stay focused on what it is that you have for me because from today going forward my friend listen our inheritance is clear god has it but you and i have to take possession we have to decide that we are not going to sit down anymore we are going to have that joshua spirit that fighting spirit that that spirit, that, that rising up and saying i am making a move my god i pray that men and women right across the nations of the earth listen to listening to me will begin to make a move help them not to settle for anything less than your perfect will for their lives take a hold of them and go with them my god where you've called them to go for i commit them into your hands and i pray father oh transform their businesses transform their lives transform their friendships and relationships my god move by your spirit over their lives and help them to rise up and make a move for your kingdom in jesus name i pray Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, friends, for being part of this service. May the Lord bless you richly. May he surround you with his favor and presence. May God bless you exceedingly and abundantly. Far above all that you, you have ever dreamt, ever asked, ever believed. May God lift you up. May God cause you to go out and take possession of what belongs to you. That's my blessing over you. I pray that you be uncomfortable until you pick up your mattresses and go where God wants you to go. I pray that you will refuse to settle for anything less than God's very best for your life. Life. Don't let anything hold you back. Oh, go after God's purpose. That's my charge to you. That's my call. That's my prayer. I love you so much, people. See you next time. God bless you richly. Listen to this.
He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life.